Let's get Frank Close's take on Jake Arrieta's comments to Bryce Harper last night. Is it something people making too much of it? Frank, what do you got? Yeah, I think people are making a little bit much of it. I I do agree that they have a decent relationship, Bryce Harper and Jake Arrieta. And, and you know what? I think there's a lot of truth to what Jake said. I mean, the, <clears throat> this Phillies team has struggled as of late, and, and Arietta, you know, he's trying to make his best pitch as possible, and he loses his best offensive threat in the lineup. And, and you know, sometimes it just it's just better to put your head down and be quiet. I mean, you know, if, if, if I get pulled over by a police officer for going 55 and a 54, you know, what, what's the better thing to do? Say I'm sorry or whatever and just move on with my day? Or if I, if I fight back, what's going to happen? You know, so in a way, the Phillies really did need uh, Bryce Harper last night, and that kind of complicated matters by losing him. Um, yeah, and Arietta said, like, the game's at 845. We came out flat. The defense didn't play well. Pitching staff didn't throw well. But I threw pretty good. I mean, <laughs> right? It's like last year he had to blow up, not to blow up, but he had, he called out Kingery uh, that people got all up in arms about. Yeah, and I thought last year he wasn't so much going after Scott Kingery so much as Scott Kingery being put into that position because, you know, last year he really was never a shortstop until they kind of threw him up there. And, and I get that they kind of needed to or they were hoping to get his bat into the lineup when they were – Dealing with some other injuries, but uh, but yeah, I mean, Jake Arrieta has, Arrieta has long been known to speak his mind. You know, you might remember back in the day, he, he's made comments about his catchers. Uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to remember which catcher it was that, but uh, but Arrieta has always spoken his mind. He's always honest, and I and I do think that given his status in the game, that that players actually respect his honesty. You know, some sometimes. Sometimes that's what you need, and even if you don't like to hear it sometimes. But I think Arietta is uh, genuine when he makes comments, and, I, and so I think I think being a veteran with, with a track record like he has, people are willing to listen. Frank Close has your mailbag questions. Let's start with uh, one from Michael John. He wants to know if Bryce Harper will be suspended or fined. Well, it looks like definitely no, because uh, Bryce Harper is in the lineup today now. Breaking down uh, what happened last night, I, I think that perhaps it was partially an overreaction from the umpire. I, you know, I think that the groundwork was laid for that ejection earlier in the game, and uh, USA Today has a has a piece out today by Ted Berg where he kind of broke down the at bat that Harper had, and you know, of the three strikes that were called on Harper, one was probably a uh, up up and outside. One of them was right on the borderline, uh, and, and and Harper had some words sort of after that at that. So the umpire knew he was already barking before he started shouting during Cesar Hernandez's at bat. Now Hernandez, he that ball that that would call the strike was was so far up and outside. I, I don't think any of the the pitch cast or anything that tracked the locations of the pitches would ever. Uh, consider that to be a strike. Uh, but so really when Harper started yelling from the dugout, he, there was already a little bit of history and, and, he, and he knew which guy to, to ring because, you know, if, if there wasn't that other situation, you know, how would you know with Harper on the bench other than that? So, but anyway, I think the real damage was done as we were just kind of alluding to when Harper left the lineup. So if, if he's not suspended, if he's, I don't think he's going to be suspended. I think that's pretty clear now. Uh, if there's a fine, we may not know about it. I don't think there's going to be a fine. But the real the real loss was last night's game where the Phillies offense has been struggling along and they really could have used his bat. And he's out of the lineup because he, he kind of pushed back at the umpire a little bit too much. So, so I think that's going to be the real penalty that the Phillies face. And you never know. You know, the Phillies, Phillies were flat, uh, as Arietta said, and maybe they could have put something together had had – Bryce Harper been in that lineup. Remember that that also ended Harper's on base streak that that he was he's basically had since he's, he's since the game one. So uh, Phillies really could have used him last night, and that's going to be what what really was the real penalty for that incident. Matt wants to know if the Phillies would consider Gio Gonzalez now that he's available again. Yeah, very interestingly. So Gio Gonzalez signed that uh, deal with the Yankees a few weeks ago, and. Uh, the deal called for a $3 million salary uh, as his base salary if he's called up to the major leagues. But it was a minor league deal, and Gonzalez had an opt-out available for uh, the, just the other day. So what Gonzalez did was he fired his agent, Scott Boris, who did not get him the deal that he wanted this offseason. 
got a new agent, and now he's on the prowl again. And uh, So far, the two teams that have been linked to him are the New York Mets, who could use some rotation help, and, and the Milwaukee Brewers, which you might remember Gonzalez was traded to last trade deadline and, and finished the season for them and started a game in the playoffs for them. Um, but the Phillies haven't been linked to them so far, at least not publicly. Now, I think every opportunity, I do think the Phillies front office looks at every potential opportunity out there. I'm sure they're going to consider um, Gonzalez just because they really discuss, they really do discuss everybody uh, that, that might be an option along the way. But, you know, when it comes down to it, I think Gonzalez is going to try to sign with a team that can give him the quickest shot to the major leagues. Now, Gonzalez made three starts at AAA, Grant Wilkes-Barre for the Yankees. And uh, his first start was a little rough. He gave up eight runs in four, in four innings. But after that, he kind of calmed down. He, he gave him six scoreless the one game, and I think he gave up two runs on five innings the next game. And then he was going to pitch one more and got rained out. Uh, but I, but I think he was kind of, uh, I think he kind of showed teams he's mostly ready to go. So now that means if you're the Phillies, do you have a spot for him right at the moment that you can insert him right into the rotation? And I don't really see that right now. I think that, you know, the Phillies moved on from Pavetta and, and, and gave Ikoff the opportunity. I think Ikoff is going to at least get a few more starts to show that he belongs in this rotation. Uh, so I don't think that the Phillies necessarily have the immediate opportunity available that Gonzalez is going to want. And so, therefore, I think that while they'll, they'll, they'll kick the tires on Gonzalez, I, I see him signing with one of those other teams, uh, maybe the Brewers that needs help uh, perhaps more than anybody, or maybe the Mets who had been reportedly interested in him in the summer, as well, I mean the offseason as well. Frank, the Phillies losers four of five, four of the last five games, not scoring much runs. So Scott wants to know, what can they do about this offense? They're going to bat the pitcher eighth. That's the solution. <laughs> well, you know, I think I think the unfortunate thing for the Phillies is they they need to get healthy. I mean, that's 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 going to be the best solution. Now, when you when you have your your main guys go out, now Gene Zagora playing very very well when he pulls his hamstring. Then Odubel Herrera pulls his hamstring, and Kingery pulls his hamstring. Seems to be a recurring theme. Uh, but, but you know, uh, when those guys go down, the other guys that are behind them are there to step up. And, and the unfortunate thing is they're not producing. And while I don't think there's any uh, immediate opportunity to try to replace some of those subs, I, I think what you're going to see is come, come July, come the trade deadline, where there's some other perhaps veteran players available, if these guys haven't been able to pick things up uh, when the, the starters were out, uh, you might find some new subs coming to town. But I, you know, I think that in the immediate future, you know, you're going to wait for Segura. Segura is going to be back this weekend. It looks like if all goes well, so at least you'll get your number two hitter back, and that that, that allows JT Real Muto to, to move back to uh, the the five spot in the lineup, uh, which right now is is held by Michael Franco. You know, the very interesting thing is, you know, Mike, Michael Franco was thriving in the eight hole, and the early the early line on Franco was, "Hey, leave him alone. You, you don't want to break it if it's not, <laughs> you know, don't don't fix what's not broken." Uh, well, now the Phillies have to bat him fifth, and then behind him now, you know, you look at the last four in this lineup, and and you have a struggling Hernandez, and then you have uh, Phil Goslin, and then you have the pitcher and Roman Quinn is also struggling. Now that, that's that's quite the hole in this lineup that seemed to be almost foolproof when the season began. So, so does that suggest, uh, so yeah. Frank, that Quinn, that Herrera would, uh, you know, because I, I think coming out of spring training, we thought maybe Quinn would have been the guy and Herrera would have been the limbo guy. But does this suggest that Herrera is firmly the center fielder? Well, I mean, if Quinn is going to hit like this in his opportunity, well, then I, then, then clearly Herrera is. Now, I, I suggested in the off season that, that Herrera might be um, on the bubble in the sense that they, they might consider moving him in the trade, uh, either to free up resources or free up space for, for somebody else. But, uh, um, but you know, at the end of the day, production is what matters. And, you know, Quinn's, Quinn's really getting his first opportunity to play every day, you know, for, for injury after injury after injury. You know, there would have been plenty of other opportunities the last couple of years for Quinn, and he just could not stay healthy. And unfortunately, uh, you know, so far, now this could change. So far, he has not shown that that he can hit uh, while playing every day. So, so that'll be something to monitor. And you know, in some ways, it's kind of good that he gets. You know, you you don't want Herrera to be hurt. I mean, he was playing pretty well, but 
in some ways, this will be good because you'll get to get the real understanding of what Quinn can do. So maybe that will help kind of clear things up for the future. All right. Uh, Frank's mailbag every Tuesday right here on the Sports Bash. Phillies, Mets, uh, Zach Eflin gets the start for the Phils, who, uh, you know, have been playing some mediocre baseball. They are 12-10. and 10. The Mets, 12-10. and 10. Those two teams meet tonight at City Field. Frank Close covers the Phillies for 97.3 ESPN.com. Thanks, pal. Thanks, guys.